Um, thank you so much for joining us. We know this word will significantly impact your life. So let's tune in. The year of growth. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about growth. This sermon won't be that long and I'm sure that's relative. But um, before we get into deeper, deeper into the subject, I just want to define growth. And I want to define the word growth and I also want to give you an antonym to growth. And what I mean by that is, is either we're going to grow or we're not going to grow. It is possible to go through this whole year and not grow. It's possible for us to waste this year and by the end of the year be in the same place we started. Or maybe it's possible even to go backward. Have you ever seen someone go backward? Have you ever seen someone that's stagnant? I mean, you see them a decade later and they're still the same immature person. They just have more gray, gray hairs. <laughs> that idea is for us. God created us to grow. You know, I'm writing a book called Guaranteed Growth. And in the first, first chapter, I talk about this. In these last days, there's an anti-Christ spirit. But there's also an anti-growth spirit. A spirit that tells us, I don't like big churches and I'm fine where I'm at. And, and the only one that would agree with you on that is the devil himself. Because God created us to multiply. As a matter of fact, the first command that he gives man, that God gives man is this, be fruitful and multiply. God never created us to be stagnant, to be in the same place. He created for every single one of us to increase and grow. And this year, we're going to see supernatural increase in growth. But let's look at the definition. Growth, the act or process of developing. Because growth is a process. Growth also means another way to say it is gradual increase. See, there's no such thing as an overnight success. We started this church, I remember, knocking on doors in the city, finding needs. We adopted 12 blocks. Our first service, we had four, around 400 to maybe 500 people that showed up. And we were in a Rudy Hernandez Center. The majority of the people that showed up were hungry, were, were homeless, were never attended church their whole lives. The church has grown, and now we're 15 years later in a 120,000 square foot building. We have another campus downtown. We have a building across the street, and we have a church in Oregon, and we're gonna have a church in Pomona. But it grows gradually. What, if, what, the growth that happens, it never happens fast enough for me. When I look at growth, sometimes I get frustrated because I don't see it. It's just like when you're growing from a little boy into a teenager. There wasn't a day that you looked in the mirror and say, I grew. <laughs> but that's how life is. The idea, if you're going to grow, just stay consistent showing up, cons consistent reading your word. Just be consistent. And I guarantee you this, you and I will grow. It also means advancement, expansion, gain, improvement. I believe all these words sound really nice. Success, maturity, multiplication. That's what growth is. So this year will be a year of improvement. This will be a year of progress. This will be a year of expansion. This will be a year where we advance. But what's the antonym or the opposite? It means to decline. This is possible. Decrease. Stagnation. Fail. Destruction. Reduction. Lessening. Underdevelop. Lessening. Now, Ask yourself, does God have a plan for you to do more ministry or less ministry? How many believe God wants you to do more? Do you think God wants to give you less responsibility or more responsibility? Does he want you to learn more 
Of course he does. God's goal is that we progress. The devil's goal is we serve less. We read less. We're less consistent in our attendance. That we, we, we have less devotional time with God. That we share the gospel less than we did in 2019. God is saying this year is not a year of going backwards, declining. It's a year of expansion, progress, and advancement. So God wants us to grow. And let's get into some scripture right now. Even Jesus grew. Say it with me. Even Jesus grew. In Luke 2.52, it says this. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all people. There's three areas that Jesus grew in. One was wisdom. That means learning or acquired knowledge. Say it with me, acquired knowledge. That means he went out there and got it. He learned it, he received it, he acquired it. Now, intelligence and wisdom are two different things. We are born with an IQ, but we're not born wise. Jesus grew with a brain that had the capacity to learn and grow, but he had to go out there and acquire the knowledge. This year, ask yourself, what area do you want to be more skilled in? Go deeper in. What books do you need to read? What, what chapters and books of the Bible are you going to read this year? What knowledge and wisdom are you going to acquire? How many services are you going to attend? Are you going to go to starting at the way? Then we have prospering at the way. Then we have leadership university. This is a question. Jesus acquired the knowledge that was available. So should we. Also, he grew in wisdom, but skill, it means skill in dealing with people. We know we're real wise when we're better at dealing with people. Wise people have high levels of people skill. People that aren't wise have low level people skills. What that means is that they're offensive. That means they're sarcastic. That means that when they speak, they're constantly offending people. If we're constantly offending people, get this, it's a sign of immaturity. It's called being underdeveloped. Jesus grew in his people skills. When he was 12 years old, he wasn't acting like a toddler. When he was 30 years old, he wasn't acting like he was in elementary school. Well, the reason I hit him, he hit me first. That means that we could grow older in age, but not mature or grow in skill with dealing with people. He also grew in skill and imparting truth and knowledge and practice of God's word, study of God's word and practice of God's word in godly living, in decision making, in discerning right from wrong. He grew in all these areas. Thank God we can grow. Jesus grew. We can grow. I'm going to give you an example of growth that happened in my life. When me and Lisa were, were going out and we were, we, were, she was, we were going out, I was like the worst hus husband, boyfriend in the world. And I was the worst boyfriend in the world because I was insecure. And because of my insecurity, I would break up with her almost every other week. Why would you break up with her? Because I wanted to break up with her before she broke up with me. So if I thought that a breakup was in sight, I'd just break up with her. It was my insecurity. But what I, what I loved, this is how sick I was, what I loved is when I broke up with her, she'd come crying. And then I would be thinking, wow, I must be really important. She's crying for me. 
It was happening over and over. So I'd break up with her every other week and she'd come crying. Oh, let's work it out. I'm sorry. You know, and it, it, she didn't even do nothing wrong, but I'd make up something. But there was one day, thank God for growth, Lisa grew out of it. I broke up with her one time and she didn't come back crying. Oh, you guys are on Lisa's side, I can tell already. So, so I, there was something wrong. So I thought she was missing. So I went to my cousin's house and it was around nine o'clock at night, I remember the day. And I go, I woke, he was, he was in his room, knocked on his window. I go, Marcus, something's wrong. He goes, what's wrong, Marco? Lisa is missing. I don't know if she's been kidnapped, what happened to her, but something is wrong. So I go, Marcus, we need to call the police. So we call 911. And I made a missing report. They go, what? They, they ask me, I go, what's going on? I go, my girlfriend is missing. They go, how long has she been missing? Almost a day. They go, well, why don't we wait to see if the day's over before we do any report? I go, well, I'm going to look for her without you guys. So me and I got my cousin. We got in the car. And we were looking through the whole Rialto. Every street looking for Lisa. I ended up going over her house. She came home, believe it or not, at one o'clock in the morning. All happy with one of her friends, acting like nothing happened. Something did happen. She didn't come back crying. And when I saw her, she was smiling, having a good time. I go, where have you been? She goes, I was at church. I go, why didn't you tell me? And she goes, I went to a revival in LA. We had a great time, it was amazing. I go, how come you didn't tell me? And she says, I thought you said we are broke up. And I go, well, we're not broken up anymore. I'll see you later. I guarantee you, I didn't break up with her ever, ever again because Lisa grew and I grew. Thank God that we can grow. So G Jesus grew in wisdom. Jesus grew in stature. That means height and some would say maturity. So as he was growing in height, he was also maturing. And he also grew in favor. That means grace, kindness, Sweetness, loving kindness, mercy, thankfulness for his blessings and benefits. He grew in joy in his grace and kindness of speech. He grew in generosity, given, and on God's influence over his heart. When Jesus grew in favor with God and men, this is all it meant, as Jesus was growing, he became even kinder, gentler. He wasn't harsh. He grew in grace and speech. What that meant was that is before he spoke, he thought, what I'm ready to say, is it going to hurt them or build them? He ended up being a joy to listen to. He also grew in thanksgiving and praise and worship. There's nothing worse than an ungrateful person. It's immature. The more we grow, the more grateful we become. He grew in mercy, you know what that means? He wasn't judgmental. When the, when the lady that was caught in a very act of adultery, when, he, when they caught her, Jesus says, where are your accusers? And she goes, they're gone. She goes, and he said this, neither do I accuse you, baby. Go and sin no more. Jesus had mercy. He wasn't judgmental. He wasn't critical. He grew in favor. That means he grew in giving people the benefit of the doubt. May we grow out of our criticism, 
our religiosity, religiosity. I bring a 2020 word for you right now. Grow out of all of that and say, you know what? This year, I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be gentle. My words are going to give favor to people. They're going to be pleasurable. They're actually going to bring joy to people's hearts. Is there anybody here that wants to grow in wisdom, in stature, and also in favor? So even Jesus grew, and God commands us to grow. Say it with me. God commands us to grow. We need to grow in our relationship with God. I just thank God I've grown. You know, I, and I'm, I don't have it all together. I'm just, I've grown, that's all. And I'm a, and I, I, to tell you the truth, I'm a slow grower. This is how slow a grower I am. When I, when I was in the seventh grade, I didn't even know how to tie my shoes yet. That's how slow a grower, this is your pastor right here. <laughs> So what I would do when my shoes were untied, someone said, you need to tie your shoes. I didn't know how to do it. So what I would do is, is so when they said, you need to tie your shoes, I go, I bet you don't know how to tie shoes. <laughs> uh, yes, I do. I go, tie mine. Let's see. <laughs> and they'll tie my shoes. I go, yes, you do. Good job, man. <laughs> I did that. I did that all the way to 10th grade. I learned how to tie my shoes at 10th grade. Oh my gosh, Pastor, you are you admitting that? Hey, it's my reality. But the question is, what area, like tying shoes, you should have already known that you don't know yet? Maybe there's an area like that. I know it sounds kind of crazy with tying shoes, but maybe we're underdeveloped and we're behind the schedule and that we were loving in our knowledge of God's word. Imagine being in church for 10 years and, and don't even know the plan of salvation. Imagine being in church for 10 years and someone comes with false doctrine and you can't even argue with them and stand on God's word. They're almost convincing you. Imagine being in church for 10 years and we still don't have a private time with God on a daily basis. These things happen. Imagine being in church for 10 years and still get offended by everybody. They look at you funny like, what are you looking at? Come on, 10 years. You're still gangbanging in church. Come on, you need to, we need to grow out of the gang banging and it's time for us to get mature. It's time for us to forgive. It's time for us to let go. It's time this year. Let's make 2020 a year of growth. I love it. But look at 2 Peter 3.18, it says this, but grow, but what? God commands us to grow, but grow. Grow in the grace. That means in the spiritual strength, the undeserved favor, goodwill towards others, grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you some facts about growth. Just two quick facts. Fact number one, growth must be intentional. Growth must be what? Growth doesn't just happen. No one improves by accident. No one improves by accident. In Proverbs 4, 4, 7, it says this, wisdom is the most important thing. The most important thing in life is gaining wisdom. Wisdom is the, it's the ability to make decisions. If you make, if you, have the, if you have the wisdom to make great decisions, you're gonna have an amazing life. If you can't make simple decisions, you will not have an amazing life. Wisdom is the ability to determine what's right and wrong. Get rid of the cloudiness. Wisdom. Wisdom will help you save a decade of your life. 
today. Wisdom will allow you to determine whether the person that you're with is actually your future husband or wife. So, Pastor, how do you do that? First of all, I'm going to give you some wisdom that you learned from the Word of God. Do not be unequally yoked. So, well, what does that mean? ¿Qué decir eso? Well, that's what I'm saying. If we don't know the Word of God, we'll think, I should marry him because he's cute. I should marry him. I should marry her because she has an awesome bate. She's a brick house. My tomate, let it all hang out. <laughs> but we're making decisions on outward appearance. We're not making decisions on, decisions on wisdom. So this, this idea, if she or he doesn't serve the God that you serve, the Bible says you are not supposed to be yoked up with them. It's your spiritual life. It's your future. And God needs to be the number one thing. If they don't love God the way you love God, then you got to put a hold on it. Hold up. Someone say wisdom. That saved me a lot of hassles. Because there were some brick houses. Lisa, when I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to them right now. That came my way. But what saved me, what, what saved me was the Word of God. Because if they didn't love God the way I love God, they weren't going to be part of the list. And God is saying, let me give you some wisdom in business, in family, in relationships, in life, and any area that you apply my wisdom, you'll succeed. Now, wisdom and prosperity go, to, go together. Say it with me. Wisdom and prosperity, what? You can't have wisdom without prosperity. So we need to ask ourselves, this is the question, if wisdom is the most important thing and growth is intentional, we got to go out there and intentionally get some wisdom. We got we, we to gotta fight against all ignorance. You don't need to do nothing to remain ignorant. We're born ignorant. So this year, you got to say, you know, I, I'm not going to remain ignorant. This year, I'm going to get educated. I'm going to gain some skill. I'm going to learn the word of God. I'm going to get involved in ministry. I'm going to learn the ins and outs of whatever business I'm in. You guys get that? Come on. This year, I'm going to read some books. This year, I'm going to read the purple book. I'm going to know the Bible. No Jehovah Witness is going to be able to come at my door and confuse me. You know, when I hear like, you know, I hear people that, that converted into Mo being a Muslim and they were a Christian. And I always say this, you were never a Christian. You didn't understand this. Because it's not even close. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way to go to the Father but through Jesus Christ. We have to understand the Word of God and the Gospel. So it says, wisdom is the most important thing. What's the most important thing? So get wisdom. So what? Go get it. Pay for it. Buy the book. Do whatever it takes. Show up. Sacrifice some time. Let's go to the next level. Let's go get it. And no one can get it for you. While I'm studying, I'm gaining wisdom. But I can't study for you. I can't read for you. I can't go to school for you. I can't do discipleship for you. You got to go get it. You got to go buy the book. You got to get a Bible. Then you got to open it up and say, this year, I'm going to get some wisdom. This year is going to be a year of growth. Well, I'm not really good at it. Okay. 
You don't get good at it by thinking about being good at it. Fact number two, growth without action won't happen. I have a vision to grow. That's fine. But if you don't take action, it ain't going to happen. You know what's so awesome about you? Today, you took action on the first Sunday of the month. I'm taking action. I want to grow spiritually. This year is not going to be like 2019. I am tired of the cycles that I've been in and I got to learn how to overcome this dysfunction in my life. You, you know what the Bible says when you're going through trials and you're going through tribulations? You know what he said? When you're going through a tough time, you know what God says, the Word of God says? It doesn't say, God, deliver me from it. God, deliver me from this massive test and trial. Please take me out. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says count it joy. When you're going through a tough time, a difficulty, it doesn't say, please get me out. He, doesn't, he said, it, you, it doesn't say that. It says, you better learn how to enjoy it. It says count it joy. When you fall into diverse trials, tribulations, difficulties, and trouble. Because this is why. And let, he goes, and let patience and let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. And this is what he says. The, the trial is going to help you grow. I don't grow on mountaintops. I grow in valleys. I grow when I face giants. I grow when I'm going through difficulty. And he says, if anybody lacks what? Wisdom. That means if you don't know what to do, ask God. He knows what to do. If you have a marriage problem, how about, how about asking Jesus and stop asking your coworkers? What do you, what do you think? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you think? What I think. How about not going on Facebook and sharing all your drama? We don't want to hear it. If you have a marriage problem, keep it to yourself. Get in a church, get some counseling, get a book and overcome it. You have a marriage problem because you don't know how to overcome it. We have cycles that we don't overcome because we don't know how. But there's not a problem. There's not a challenge. There's not a difficulty that there's not an answer for. And God says, if you need wisdom, just ask and he will freely give it to you. Go get some, ask somebody. <laughs> Growth without action won't happen. Ex Ecclesiastes 11.4 says this, if you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. <laughs> Well, what I was waiting for was for the kids to grow up and then I'll start serving in the church. I go, but they're only two years old. <laughs> what I was waiting for to begin to share my faith is after I graduate from Leadership University, you don't have to wait. You'll never get good at anything until you step into it. Maybe you need to share your testimony, what God has done, or maybe you just start off inviting people. But you'll never get good at something without taking action and, action and someone say practicing. What you get good at is what you're consistent in and you practice. Someone say be consistent in what? Any area that you're skilled at, you gained the skill. You were born with talent, but you were not born with skill. To gain skill, you must train to have skill. I'm better than I was in relationships, thank the Lord. And I'm getting so good, I'm even teaching others how to do this. Hallelujah. Right. See, we need to make a choice to grow and then do all, it, all we can, do all it takes. Someone say, make a choice and then do all it what? We got to stop waiting till we're motivated. Mo motivation, motivation. It, it, you say, well, I'm, not, I'm really not motivated. Motiv mo see, do not... Do it when you're not motivated and then motivation will come and make it easy to keep going. You see, motivation is overrated. We're not, see, I want you to get this. We're not mature if we only do things that we're motivated to do. 
Successful people that grow, they do what they don't want to do. This morning, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I wanted to wake up way later. I got here right around four or some in the morning, ready to go, praying, getting ready for this moment. I'm not waiting to be motivated, I do it. Don't wait till you're motivated to come to church. Be disciplined and make up your mind. I'm going to show up to the gym. I'm going to show up to church. I'm going to show up to class. I'm done waiting to be motivated. That's not getting me nowhere. Amen. James 2.17 says this. Thus, faith by itself, unaccompanied by action, is dead. You know what that means? If we have dreams, we have visions, and we don't take action... This is what's going to happen. The vision is never going to come to pass. Faith and dreams and belief without action is dead. It means it's inoperative, it's destitute of power, has no power. So these are five action steps. Someone say action steps. We're going to take to intentionally grow, even in this month. Number one, sign up for next step of growth track. If you've not joined, I want you to get this. Starting at the way, gone through the purple book. Stop talking yourself out of it. I don't need to do that. I'm already a member of the world. I already, I already read through half the Bible. <laughs> don't we? I want you to get, doesn't the old you always talk you out of the new you? That's a waste of time. That's for beginners. I'm not a beginner. I'm, I'm a theologian. But you don't even know how to treat people yet. You can't even get along with your wife. You want to change the world? Oh, oh Lord. All right, I got a few. I didn't get no claps or nothing on that one. He said, A lot of nervous people. Ooh. So I said, sign up. Tuesday, I'm going to be here. I'd love for you to be here. Number two, write out your goals. I don't want, I don't like writing. Okay, there we go. That's the old you trying to talk yourself, talk, trying to talk yourself out of becoming a new you. I, this, this is what's going to happen. If you write down your goals, you're going to be 10 times more effective. You got to have an idea. Where, where are you going? What are you doing? What's your life about? So you should be able to look at it on a daily basis and say, this is what I'm about and this is where I'm headed. I'm excited about my future. Number three, attend all impartation services. Oh, no, nah, man. What is that? How many, how many services is that? Well, it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then Sunday twice. That, so that's five services. Well, I'm not going to church no five times. I could get it the first time. No, there's going to be, uh, this is a time of expansion. This is a time for you to do more than you've ever done to get results you've never had. This is what, every time we open this church, this church up, an impartation, there's going to be a word for you. There's going to be a building block for you and your family to grow. And it's going to equip you to help others get equipped. Four services in a row. I've never done that. Yeah, but you used to go to your drug dealer for services in a row. You used to go to the casino four weekends in a row. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You used to go to a bar, the club, four times in a row. You used to go to your dirty boyfriend four nights in a row. All we're talking about, if you did that for your sin, why wouldn't you do that for your God? Come on, he would stay in that tomb for three days in that tomb, fighting every single demon and resurrected on the third day. Come on, let's do more than we've ever done so we could grow at a level we've never grown. Number four, tithe and bring a first fruit offering. And number five, participate in 21-day fast. Oh, Lord. And we're starting today. And when we're starting today, I ate, I ate two ribeyes last night. I'm storing up like a chipmunk. chipmunk. <laughs> I ate two ribeyes last night and a beef rib and macaroni and cheese and beans. And then I went to full God to eat some fold soup. 
Then I got some Wheaties and I was eating that. I'm ready for this fast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they, there's, three, there's, there's three types of fast. Fast number one, a complete fast. That means no water or food. I don't recommend you do that for 21 days because you'll be dead, okay? So, <laughs> and don't blame the church. I mean, we don't want to be on the front page of the newspaper. I told you, don't do it. <laughs> now you could do a day or so of that, but not more than two days because you actually could die of thirst in three days. But you could be without food for three weeks. That's why we said three weeks. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Number two, it's a liquid fast. That means water, juices, and broth. Someone said, now you're talking. Give me something to consume. And you might want to mix it up. That means you might want to start off with something like that and with water for the first uh, water broth and some light soups. You could do that. A Daniel fast is broth, water, juices, vegetables, n nuts. And last, la last service, I said snacks because I couldn't read. It's not snacks, it's salads. <laughs> I messed up, I go snacks, you got snacks. Oh yeah. And then I caught myself, I go, no, it's not snacks, you can't do that. And someone was like, I already took a picture, that's the rule. But the last one is partial fast. Someone say partial fast. And this is, this is the one that the majority of us are going to do. And that means you fast until a certain time of day. Like me and my family will fast until six o'clock in the afternoon. And then we'll have a light meal. We don't have a meal to make up for every meal we miss. I know some of you guys think, I'll, I'll make it up. If you gain weight at the end of 21 days, <laughs> you did not fast. You did something else. Because I know air don't have calories. Well, I was breathing ear, air near, near um, in and out Burger has a lot of calories there. Yeah, right. Okay. So for 21 days, this Wednesday, I'm going to talk about fasting at a whole nother level. Today, we're just introducing. Are you ready to grow in 2020? Come on. Are you ready to grow in 2020? I'm going to give you some quick advice. If you mess up, don't beat yourself up. This is not about being perfect. This is about we're just drawing close to God. You eat something accidentally. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. I do it all the time. Every fast, I accidentally. Oh, what, what? Have you ever done that? Come on. Yeah. And he catches yourself. That's okay. Just it's no big deal. The goal is to hear from God, draw close to God. And that's all it is. And by the end of the period, you're going to hear God's voice clear. You're going to get revelation. Some of you guys are going to get ideas. They're going to change your whole decade. It's going to be crazy. Someone's, someone's going to get business ideas, ministry ideas. It's going to be really crazy what's going to happen next. So also, use the time to expand. That means do more than you ever have done. If you've not served, start serving. You've not joined Power 12. I mean, Power 12, join Power 12. But just go expand. Do something more than you've ever done, okay? So get ready. We're going to have an amazing 21 days. It's going to change your life. Forever. Pastor Rob, can you close this out, please? If this message has been a blessing in your life and you would like to show support, please comment, like, share, share and subscribe or click the link below so that you can contribute to our ministry. Thank you and God bless.